Hey, what is up, mortals? It's Miggy Sagas, and welcome back to What If Deku Had a Luck Quirk. Just wanted to greet you all by just saying, sit back and relax, you're in for a treat. Let's begin. Loneliness is an empty emotion. It can be described as the feeling you experience when you stand in the middle of a bustling city, watching people rush by without feeling even remotely connected to them. It's not the same as being alone, as being alone is a state of physical being. Loneliness is a state of the soul, where you're surrounded by beings who will never understand you. That was just how it was for Izuku Midoriya, the child cursed with luck, as he walked through the UA gates. The day was what anyone would have expected from a high school, as the students sat in an English class. It had only been a day, but everyone in the room had already accepted the sight seen by the windows. Izuku had his head down and was seen to be asleep, as Bakugo leaned back on his chair. Not even present Mike had the heart to tell the two otherwise, since they both answered questions when asked. It seemed that the two did nothing, but at the same time, both boys were at the top of their studies. There was nothing the teachers could complain about, and as such, the students followed. The only time Izuku even moved was during lunch, and no one blocked his path as he walked out. It didn't matter where he went. The freckled one always had just watched as the world went by, never part of anything in particular. It was as if everything was surrounded by a glass wall, and Izuku couldn't pass through. Was he the one in a cage and unable to come out? Or was he caged out from a world he couldn't go in? It was a craving for love and connection beyond the surface level but the bringer of silence knew better. He couldn't afford to indulge himself anymore, and instead chose to dwell within his loneliness. Although, out of everything, the Greenette knew to be grateful for at least one thing, and that was Bakugo. Even if the human grenade had only stood there, neither in nor out of the glass cage, Izuku was grateful that he was not alone. I am coming through the door like a normal person! Excitement pulsed through the students when they realized that their teacher was none other than All Might himself. It was the only lesson that made a hero school different from others, and everyone quickly ran off to change. Costumes were made within a budget that the children were given, so many had to think about what their essentials were. As for Izuku, he owned the most important piece already, and was going to just continue using the capture scarf he had. The Greenette had submitted his notes, along with the weapon, so most of his budget was spent on camouflage. He had requested a light costume that reduced any sound he made, along with the basic resistances to everything. When the freckled one opened his briefcase, he found completely matte black clothes with a similarly colored scarf. Everything was there, and made exactly the way his notes had described. It didn't take long to assemble a costume, and after fixing the specially made gloves on properly, Izuku took a step back into the shadows of the changing room, and although it was hard to tell from his silence, Bakugo could confirm that Izuku was probably happy from seeing himself blend into the corner. Even if he was suppressing his emotions, the boy was taking his first steps as a hero, and it made him excited to see the progress. All Might pulled out a box filled with lots to randomly pair the students together, and within minutes, the bringer of silence found himself standing next to a girl called Uraraka. She seemed nice as she approached him with a smile, but the cheerful expression quickly became a strained one, as her teammate didn't even register that she was there. Your name was Izuku, right? I heard Bakugo call you that. There was only more silence, and the girl was getting a little frustrated at the lack of an answer. She kept asking questions to try and get a reaction, but in the end, their five minutes of preparation time was wasted. But we don't have a plan yet. As the buzzer indicating that the hero team could enter the building went off, the brunette desperately turned around to try and make a final attempt at a plan. However... Her partner had disappeared. Hey! She tried to locate where the greenette could have gone, but she had no leads at all. Letting out a huff of annoyance, she resolved to find the bomb herself. Behold, I am the personification of villainy! Ida's robotic laughter echoed through the empty room as he stood before the bomb, and it was quickly followed by the sound of a certain human grenade telling him to shut up. We need to work together in this criminal act of injustice, my partner. Let us put our evil heads together for a devious plan. The Azeret suddenly hushed when he saw that Bakugo had raised an arm, and the two stayed silent until the sound of footsteps inching closer could be heard. The bespeckled one took the hint, and quickly braced himself as Bakugo pointed an arm toward the door. The gentle pitter-patter stopped just before the open archway, 
and the blonde grinned maliciously as he was ready to pull the pin. The second a curious bob poked out, a potent ignition detonated, and a rock of scream was drowned out by the colossal wave of sound made from the eruption, and even Ida could feel himself sweating from within his suit of armor. Destruction. The windows had shattered, glass was splintered and scattered across the floor. A clear hole was made in the doorway, and the students in the observatory room paled, waiting for the smoke to clear. A sigh of relief washed over everyone, though, when they saw that Uraraka was still able to move. Her body had been singed a shiny pink and littered with cuts, but in the end, she would be fine. Young Bakugo, do not do that again unless you want to be disqualified. All Might scolded the blonde student who nodded, surprised at how potent his own attack was since he hadn't moved around much so far. Ida wanted to check up on his opponent, but managed to steal his nerves. This was a training exercise, and he didn't want to break character. Instead, the bespeckled one praised Bakugo for his sharp hearing, and the human grenade only told him to be quiet again before looking around the room, checking the shadows. He's still not here. His partner wasn't sure how to react to this statement, and decided to stand by the window when a slight movement caught his eye. His outburst caught the attention of the other two, and Uraraka gasped when her eyes managed to just see the outline of her silent classmate. Ah! The explosion fired at the corner of the room, lighting up the shadows and exposing Izuku who had been hidden there. The silent one quickly dodged before landing on the ground, pulling out the capture scarf and immediately looping it around his childhood friend. The blonde immediately reacted and jumped up, missing the fabric as it barely swept past his feet. But the green net twisted his arm and sent the weapon to curve and bind around Ida instead. The bespeckled one found himself tangled, and within a second, had his limbs bound tightly against his body. Uraraka pulled herself up to try and get involved with the situation, but seeing her move, Bakugo turned toward her and accidentally left an opening for the freckled one to act. Wasting no time, Izuku dashed toward the bomb, and his opponent grit his teeth before deciding to let out another detonation. Using the blast to push himself forward, the human grenade managed to force his body between the one cursed with luck and the target item. Izuku knew better than to rush forward and, instead, threw the scarf in a direction behind him, wrapping the fabric around a pillar and pulling his body out of the blonde's immediate blast range. Bakugo ran after his opponent, but saw that the greenette had disappeared into the shadows again, and knew that there was no point in trying to find someone who could so easily blend into the background. Instead, he went right back to the bomb and lifted the item before placing it on the brightest corner. He then focused himself before standing still, letting his eyes dart around to try and detect even the slightest of movements. Silence returned to the room, and after another minute, Uraraka decided to approach the blonde. He didn't see her as a threat as she backed up slightly seeing him raise an arm, but neither took their eyes off each other as she slowly inched closer. Her light footsteps were circling the room as she crept, but when she took a step near a shadow, Uraraka was faced with a fear she didn't know. The floor, which was cracked from the explosion earlier, creaked under her weight. As panic flooded into her face, the girl suddenly found herself falling to the floor under. Uraraka! Ida jumped up and dashed toward the hole that had formed in the center of the room. He was handcuffed by the restraints, and before he could act, the ground ominously creaked again. At that moment, the shadow that was near Uraraka earlier darted out, and the Azuret took a step back, recognizing the mop of green hair. Without letting the opportunity pass, the freckled one connected the end of his scarf to the top of the bomb and pulled himself up to land on the item. Just like that, the hero team had won. Izuku. Bakugo, who hadn't stopped his opponent from winning as he knew what had happened, immediately moved so his friend could distance himself from the others. The floor stopped creaking and the human grenade opened the bindings of his partner before going down to see how the brunette was. She had been hit by falling chunks of concrete, and her arm was buried in debris. It wasn't looking good. The next few minutes were a blur as Recovery Girl was brought over for treatment. It was a lot worse than it looked since Uraraka had used her quirk to lighten the rubble, but they had still crushed her arms before zero gravity could activate. Even though she was ultimately fine... There was simply too much damage to heal at once. The girl was already exhausted from running around, trying to find both her partner and the bomb, so the brunette was covered in bandages before returning. Upon arrival, All Might welcomed her back before turning to scowl at Izuku. Young man, this was a video sponsored by Honey. 
Honey is a free browser add-on available on Google, Opera, Firefox, Safari. If it's a browser, it has Honey. Honey automatically saves you money when you've checked out on sites like Amazon, Papa John's, or Kohl's. Wherever you shop, it's a good chance that Honey can save you money. All you have to do when you're checking out these major sites is click that little orange button and it will scan the entire internet and find you discount codes. It takes two clicks to install Honey. Now, anytime you check out, Honey will scan the entire internet and find coupon codes for you. If there is a coupon code, they will find it, and if there's not, you can rest assured that you are getting the best price possible, as there is literally not one available on the internet. If you install Honey right now, you can save like $50 to $100 on your shopping, doing nothing. There's literally no reason not to install Honey. It takes two clicks, 10 million people use it, 100,000 five-star reviews, unless you hate money, you should install Honey. It might even save Izuku who forgot that this was a team exercise. The green hat silently observed the ground as he let the number one hero finish his scolding. The bringer of bad luck had truly considered working with Uraraka at the beginning of the exercise, but had decided against the idea when he reminded himself of his history. Nothing good had ever happened to those who associated with him, and he didn't want to hurt anyone else. Now that the training was over, the student's resolve became stronger than ever as he refused to listen to the number one hero. It didn't matter how much the others wanted to get along with him. Izuku would rather be alone than hurt anyone else close to him again. I worked solo. Noraraka's face could no longer keep itself from an upset frown. She was trying to become a hero for the sake of her family. Yet, here she was, injured and in pain, stuck with someone who didn't seem to care at all. Ida, who was with her the whole time, had an equally cold expression adorning his features as he marched right up to Izuku. Even if you do work solo, I would like you to apologize to Uraraka. Instead of helping her in her time of need, you ignored her suffering and continued with your own goal. How could you aim to be a hero when you don't even care about your classmates' well-being? Everyone suddenly shivered as a cold wind suddenly blew from the aircon. The machine seemed to be malfunctioning and Bakugo quickly ran to his friend to drag him away, grabbing a piece of paper and a pen from a nearby desk. He handed the two items to Izuku, who started to rapidly write notes down, before pushing the greenette through the door and out of the room. The bringer of silence could feel his usually calm heart thumping in his ears, and he hated how even the slightest change in his mood brought unhappiness to others. Bakugo saw this and paused to re-enter the observation room. Apologize? You're the one who's supposed to be fucking apologizing here, glasses! Protected without even fucking realizing it! You losers would be lucky to end up as psychics of some busted D-lister. His hostile voice pierced the tension-thick air like sharp icicles as he glared at the two before returning to his friend. The door shut with a heavy thud, deeply resonating with the room and causing a sense of guilt to rise up in the teacher's present. All Might knew what the Greenette's quirk was and didn't mean to harm the boy when he told him off. The number one hero just wanted to stress the importance of working together, but it had obviously backfired. Sending an email to Aizawa to talk about the two later, the hero continued his class and sent out the next group. I know, I know, but still. Damn it! A familiar gruff complained just ahead of Ida as he was heading home. The bespeckled boy focused to see two of his classmates walking and decided to rush toward them. He was confused about why they were still near the school when they had left almost an hour ago. He also just wanted answers to why the blonde wanted him to apologize. As he got closer, he saw that Bakugo was the only one talking as usual, and the Azeret wondered how his classmate could read Izuku's silence. Get it through your stupid head and it isn't your fault you can't go near people! Bakugo suddenly blew up a newspaper that had flown at him from across the street. It was only then that Ida noticed that Bakugo was intentionally setting off random outbursts of his quirk to make the people walking past to avoid the two. He cleared his throat in an attempt to clear his mind, catching the attention of the human grenade who had turned around. What do you want, glasses? The Azeret noticed how Izuku had taken a step back to create distance between the two, before even glancing in his direction, but brushed it off and addressed the problem at hand. I wanted to ask about it earlier. Could you explain why I should be the one apologizing? Silence greeted him for a single moment as Bakugo glanced at his friend. The greenette didn't react at all in the eyes of the bespeckled one, but it seemed to be a positive answer to the blonde as he started to talk. His quirk. 
after the brief and bitter explanation. Not a single word escaped Ida as he took in the information before the gears of his mind finally clicked into place. Izuku was not trying to ignore his classmate by walking away. The Greenette was trying to not let misfortune befall another person nearby. By going for the bomb, he could quickly end the training exercise, and it would allow a recovery girl to access the brunette faster. It was also the reason why Bakugo had just stood there as his opponent went to win. By staying away, Izuku was keeping them safe, and it was also why the student had always been so distant. My impression was completely wrong. Bowing down deeply, Ida apologized as he faced his classmate. I'm sorry. The bringer of silence could feel sincerity saturated into the words, and he relaxed a little. Ida's response to discovering his quirk was a positive one, and it had been a while since anyone had reacted that way. It was nice, and he turned around before continuing home. Thanks. Bakugo quickly turned away to catch up to his friend, and the bespeckled one was taken aback by his behavior. It was nice to see the two of the unsocial classmates finally interact with him, even if it was the result of a misunderstanding. As Misuki welcomed both boys back, Izuku went up the furthest room and pulled open his notes. From his outburst of panic writing earlier, he made a couple of breakthroughs in his research. Even if Ida's positive reaction had made him happy, the Greenette still wanted to rid himself of his quirk. The first lead he had was about the rumor of a man who could give anyone a quirk. The student quickly hypothesized that if such a man could exist, the opposite could be true. The second lead he had was another rumor that would lead to a massive change in hero society if it was true. It was the possibility of a drug that could permanently erase a quirk. The only problem was that both leads were only whispers on the streets and had no credibility. Your vote? Izuku blankly tried to process what was asked of him when he realized that he had actually fallen asleep on his desk. The research from the night before had kept him awake, but his sharp thinking quickly reached the solution. Placing his piece of paper at the edge of the desk, the freckled one returned to his pseudo-sleep as Ida stood proudly before them all. The bespeckled one was chosen for rep, while Momo Yayorozu was chosen for deputy. It was a level-headed choice, and although there were a couple of objections to the voting system, they were quickly dealt with when Ida demonstrated his leadership skills by calming down the panic caused by an alarm. Having fun? The words cut through Izuku's overloaded mind like a hot knife through butter, and the greenette paused his notes for a moment. To others, the question was simple, but to the bringer of silence, it had been a while since he had registered that he was happy. Like a withering plant finally receiving nutrients, the freckled one nodded as he added more to his notes. There was still so much to theorize that when the greenette next slowed down to look around, he found himself sitting by the window on a bus. They were heading to the USJ for hero training, and everyone was in their hero costumes apart from Uraraka. Her injuries had mostly healed, but Recovery Girl had recommended one more day of rest. She was in the UA gym uniform instead, and had quite the exhausted expression whenever she happened to turn in Nizuku's direction. Laclasse was still mostly in the dark about what the bringer of silence Kirk was, but no one had the courage to ask either. The only interaction the freckled one had was when Ida spoke to Bakugo, and the blonde would answer for him. It made many wonder how the two got along, compared to how one was always hidden and quiet. The other one was consistently loud and seemed somehow social in his own way. Hey, Bakugo! Kirishima, an outgoing boy who had been in a conversation only a moment ago, waved a human grenade to attempt to connect some bridges between everyone. They were talking about who would make a good hero when the redhead sighed sadly. I just sometimes wish my quirk would be more flashy like Bakugo's, you know? Mine's not exactly something that stands out. He awkwardly laughed as the others told him that his quirk was perfect in its own way, and the human grenade rolled his eyes with annoyance. You can still be someone's hero. Catching Izuku's ears like a bee attracted to nectar, the greenette listened as Bakugo spoke to the class with an irritated tone. When he was small and quirkless like the rest, the child was a cheery boy who openly admired All Might. His happiest memories had the idol deeply engraved in some way or another, and those memories were the drive that pushed the bringer of silence to the day. He wanted to return to the time before his quirk had shown effect. He wanted to go back in time when he was free. All he wished for was to retrieve the happiness he had lost, just to be enveloped by the time before the accident. The bus stopped as they had arrived and the Hero 13 gave a quick but detailed briefing. They were welcomed in and ready to save people from natural disasters when Izuku didn't feel so well. 
Deciding to hurry a little so he could be near the teacher, Kirishima pointed at a black purple mist that appeared in the central plaza. Get back. This is not a drill. Those are real villains. In a world where everything felt slow moving, a giant blur suddenly ran through, even if it was black and white like the rest. The deep color of crimson red eyes glinted sharply as they passed. Izuku's own viridian eyes fixated on the only person who could compete against All Might and his love for heroes. And for a single moment, the empty boy felt an emotion. Thirteen tried to guide them away as Aizawa took down the thugs at the bottom of the stairs. The greenette was still standing by the archway as he tried to calm his thumping heart. He couldn't recognize the emotion well, but it was something he knew he had experienced before. Goosebumps ran up the student's skin as he watched the eraser hero continue to knock out villains. He was watching his idol fight right before his eyes, and the boy knew what the feeling was. Excitement. We are the League of Villains. The ripple of panic crashed like a heavy wave throughout the unsettled students as Kuragiri appeared before the class. The rescue hero was about to act when two boys suddenly ran forward to attack. Their futile attempt only caused the villain to laugh, before expanding his body to cover them all. It looks like I missed a few. The teleporter glanced at Shoji, who had got off the ground, revealing that he had shielded both Mina and Sero. Sato and Uraraka landed safely on the floor as Ida grabbed them both, and they all turned to glare at the villain. The purple-black tendrils attacked Thirteen as the multi-limbed classmate confirmed his classmate's safety. They were all scattered around the facility when Uraraka's scream suddenly pierced the air. Thirteen fell to the floor with her back torn open, desperately instructing Ida to get help. The class representative panicked for a single moment, but dashed forward, eyebrows furrowed and body tense. Kurogiri teleported before him, but Shoji acted quickly, grabbing the purple-black mist to buy time. The Azeret silently thanked his classmate, but it was too early as the warping villain materialized before him once again. He was going to get caught. Uraraka couldn't move. She was still in her cast and the brunette could feel her frustration build up. She wanted to help, but there was nothing she could do. The world seemed to slow down as Kuragiri closed in on her classmate when something different caught her eye. For a single millisecond, the floor seemed to stand up, making its presence known by a changing color. The camouflage melted away as a certain student stood right next to the villain, his previously excited face returning to the emotionless one. You're annoying. Thank you all for sticking around, and I hope you enjoyed that. Before you leave, we would just like to let you know that we, the Celestials, have many other channels for your entertainment and viewing purposes. All the information you'll need is right below here in the description, so feel free to check out all the other incredible projects our team creates. Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below. That's all for today's video, so goodbye and have a divine day.